be here. Um, this is the uh, planning board meeting for June 5th, 2024, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. Adequate notice of this regular meeting of the planning board of the township has been provided. If you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Councilman and, oh, not here. Uh, Theodore Chase? Here. Robert LaCourt? Here. Sammy Chavon? Here. Jennifer Ragno? Here. Mahir Rafiq? Here. Uh, Charles Brown has to be excused, Mike. Robert Thomas? Here. Rebecca Hilbert? Here. Mark Dancy and Chairman Orsini. Here. Um, so before we get, begin, let me just um, go over the agenda here. So um, Davidson property is going to be carried to September 4th. No further notification needed. So if you're here for that, um, come back on September 4th. Um, for the board members, after we're done with our one hearing tonight, which should be a fairly rapid one, um, um, I've asked Jim to give us, um, which I have done about every year or so, um, uh, a little update on um, planning case law that might be relevant to us and a couple other things. So just stick around for that, maybe about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, whatever. 15. Okay. I'll talk um, fast. It's well, it's well worth the time. I've never seen you talk fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so with that, um, motion for the minutes of the regular meeting April 17th. You're making a motion? I will. I'll second. Let's just get through this. Okay, Chase. Uh, well, uh, may I comment on the minutes? Yes. Oh, yes, of course. No. I'm sorry. I thought you had uh, a separate question. Okay. The, uh, may, um, the, the, Laura, the uh, Onyx minutes are fine. There's a few typos I think you can fix. There's just three things in the May 15th minutes. I just want to check that I'm right in reinterpreting them. On, on page 6, paragraph 5, that's the one beginning Chairman Orsini, uh, I think it reads there, side of the building toward Dama Road, but it's referring to the loading zone, and that's on the side away from Dama Road. Right? Yeah. No. And in the last paragraph, it, it speaks of a maximum of 50 decibels at night and 50 decibels during the day. I, well, I, it should be 65 decibels during the day. Anyway. And then on, on page 9, uh, line 3 from the top, uh, made the maximum effort to meet the tree replacement value. It doesn't say tree there, and it's rather unclear unless you... Okay, if you send me, your, you usually send me your notes. If you want to send me your notes, Kathy can change it, or if she doesn't have time, I'll change it before they're uploaded okay. to the system. I can give you a little... You can give me paper. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, that was fine. And well, when we get to the May 15th minutes, whoever makes the motion will... It will make that, a, make that a condition of, uh, or amendment, yeah. So okay. we did have a motion and a second for April 17th. Um, Correct. Um, Mike Rossini firsted and Robert Thomas second. So Theodore Chase? Yes. And we'll make the corrections that you asked. Uh, Robert LaCourt? Yes. Sammy Shalon? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Mahir Rafiq? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. Chairman Rossini? Yes. Um, and I'll make a motion for the minutes for the regular meeting of May 15th, amended um, per Ted's um, corrections. I'll second, second that. Okay, okay. Ted. Um, Ted Chase? Yes. Robert LaCourt? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. One resolution tonight, Northview Associates, if you'll recall, that was the subject of uh, the last meeting's minor subcommittee. Um, we felt that it deserved um, its own resolution, um, so uh, that's what that is. 
So only you, Mahir wasn't available, so you and Bob have to one first, one second, and then it's just the two of you. That's it. Okay. Well, that's easy. I'll move it. Second. Okay. Bob Thomas. <laughs> Robert Thomas. Yes. Michael Orsini. Yes. Okay, so we have a couple of discussion items, ordinances, 44-24 uh, anti-idling signage on which we will need a vote. So this is uh, an ordinance that's uh, referred to you, um, again, per the municipal land use law when the council introduces an ordinance that's going to change the land development ordinance. It, uh, by law, needs to be referred to you uh, to determine if, it's, uh, if there's any inconsistencies with the master plan or if you have any general recommendations to make. Um, I mean, basically, it's, it's a pretty short ordinance, but it, it, it requires, um, as part of site plan applications, um, that, the, um, that the developer has to indicate where they're going to be placing anti-idling signage um, on the site. And place it. And yeah, well, of course, yes, per the site plan. Yeah, I read the ordinance. It's pretty straightforward, and you know, it's a good thing, environmentally and otherwise, and especially for, you know, warehouses or anything commercial that abuts a residential use. We certainly want as minimal idling as possible. So that's what this ordinance seems to do. Yeah, it's been back and forth between the environmental commission and the manager and council for quite a while, I think about a year and a half, and we finally got agreement. Sounds good. So, I mean, I'll, I'll make a motion that we endorse it. I'll second that. Ted Chase? Yes. Robert LaCourt? Yes. Sammy Shabon? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Mahia Rafik? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. And Chairman Arsini? Yes. Uh, the second ordinance, 4441-24, um, regards three wells on a temporary basis. This is for the development currently um, in progress off of Amwell Road behind Restas. Three of those houses cannot be served by public water at the moment, but they will have to be within a year. And Mark, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, I, I, I think I might defer to Vince, yeah. actually. Vince, you, yeah. Vince has been more involved than I have yeah. in this matter. This, this will dovetail into the one application tonight, we have a, a master permit that has expired. And it's, we, whenever we do uh, additional development as part of our master permit with the DEP, it has to be listed in there and we can't go over a certain gallonage. This development, the, those three homes would push it over the maximum. So to let them continue to build, and we have an ordinance that says they must hook up, plus the planning board, uh, approved it, so they're, they're either going to have to go back to the TRC or the planning board to amend that also. But council has to pass an ordinance to allow them to supersede the ordinance. While it is not a development ordinance, council felt it was appropriate to bring it to your attention because if for some reason you went, oh my God, this is the worst thing on the planet, they would not put it before them. But basically it's a stopgap. As soon as we get a new master permit, they obviously don't want to have wells there. Mm -hmm. Chances are they will not ever install the wells because by the time they build these homes in a year from now, we'll most likely have the master permit. But to protect themselves and to protect our, our, our water operator who can't sign for a water line extension that will service more than a certain amount of gallonage, they have to pass the ordinance and then amend their site plan. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. Probably will never really come to pass. And if I were them, I would just slow walk those last three homes until you got the permit and not have to spend, you know, money to dig a well and do all that and, and then convert it to public water. And just to be clear, Vince, just when you, when you say the master permit, that's... That's the township's permit with the DEP for the yes. public water system. Yes. You, do, you don't. You don't need a formal vote on it. It's yeah. just, you know, if you were, had great offense to it for some reason, but as long as there's nothing, we can move on. Yeah. Just so for technical, just for this isn't a land development. This is not a land development ordinance, so you don't have to discuss right. consistency with the master plan, whatever. This is really more of an FYI. Yeah, it's more administrative because of the things that Vince just outlined. But I think in practicality, it, 
it probably shouldn't <laughs> if I were the developer. No, I wouldn't they, want it. I guarantee you no. they do not want to waste money to install wells. Yeah. That's just no. And how long do we expect the DEP to take in updating the master permit? Well, as soon as we finalize our second contract, we have, we have two water operators, American Water and, and, and New Brunswick. Uh, we haven't finalized our water, we have, we've agreed on the numbers, which will satisfy our needs, but we haven't agreed on a little bit of language with force majeure language. As soon as that's done, we'll sign the contracts, then Carl can finish preparing it, which will take him a couple months, and then it goes to the DEP, and anywhere between three and six months, typically, it takes them to review it. So, once again, it's about a year process by the time they'd be ready for those homes. So, hopefully, within that time period, we'll get it done. But they have to protect themselves. God mm -hmm. forbid something happens, and we're two years into the process, then they're going to have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. they, they, get, they do not want to waste tens of thousands of dollars, and then a year later have to abandon those wells and spend more money and it doesn't and it makes the houses less valuable being on the wells also so yeah. highly unlikely it's going to be done yeah and according to the language of the ordinance once franklin yeah. tells them they have capacity they have to hook them up within one year okay i had a slip of my eyes here for ordinance 4440-24 rebecca hilbert yes all right thank you oh did we miss her um, i just realized um. that i well, good news. This one doesn't need a vote. So, uh, so uh, we had a minor subcommittee again tonight uh, for a three-lot subdivision on Charlotte Avenue, which um, is off Edgewood Terrace and is um, nearly perfectly bisected by the municipal boundary of uh, South Boundbrook and Franklin. Um, and I'll, I'll just turn it over to Mark for a summary of, of, of what the, uh, I mean, his report pretty much summed it all up. And they've met um, all the conditions um, either satisfied or, or they are no longer applicable due to their revisions. And uh, Mark, you can take it from there. Yeah, so the minor subdivision subdivision committee met uh, prior to this meeting. As uh, you recall, when, it's, uh, when there's a um, entirely complying minor subdivision, meaning they don't need any variances, um, it doesn't have to come before the full board. It goes before the minor subdivision committee for approval. Um, this is a three-lot minor subdivision um, that complies with all of the um, provisions of Franklin's ordinance. Um, so the subdivision committee went through uh, over the application. There was a technical uh, review committee report um, dated May 21st. Um, based on that report, the committee's recommend or the committee's approval is based on. Uh, consistency with some uh, remaining technical issues in the TRC report, limiting disturbance to the degree shown on sheet four. So they do show not the entirety of the sites being cleared, but some areas in the back, uh, the roughly the rear third of each of the lots being retained. Uh, the planting of street trees as shown on the plans and compliance with chapter 222, which is the tree removal ordinance. Um, so similar to the Northview Associates, we'll put together a resolution for the Minor Subdivision Committee uh, at the next meeting. And again, per our bylaws, we're, the Minor sub Subdivision Committee is required to report their decision to this board. So that's the report to you. Yeah, and, and, and as a Minor Subdivision Committee, we, we you know, endorse, the, endorse the plan, but we won't, won't have to take that vote until they have the resolution before us. Oh, you don't want to do the vote now? Okay. I don't think so. I mean, until we have a resolution, probably. Yeah. Not. yeah. Um, that brings us to open public comments. So this is the portion where we open to the public for general planning comments not associated with a hearing otherwise we have tonight. Um, we have one hearing, which is Cal Sterling. So if you're here for that, there'll be a separate opening to address any comments there. This is for other general planning comments that the public may have. So with that, I move to open to the public. Second. All in favor? All right. Meeting is open to the public for any general planning comments. Seeing new takers, move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, um, so, Cal Sterling, you're up. Yeah, make sure I have my microphone on. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, board, it's a pleasure. Jim Stahl, Boris Golden Foley, Vignolo, Hyman and Stahl. 
Uh, before I start on the, on the text, uh, my double secret witness, some of you may or may not know that Peter Vignola's daughter, Mr. Clarkin's granddaughter, was uh, graduated law school yesterday, and she's a real terror in a very positive sense. So someday you may or may not have the privilege of having her here. And Jimmy is too humble to probably tell you all about it, but I, I want to personally congratulate him again. Thank you. It's nice. It's very right. nice. Both of her grandfathers are lawyers. Her father is a lawyer. Yeah, I think I said Peter. Okay. I see Peter. <laughs> uh, I hope he went to law school and didn't finish because she had Lizzie. <laughs> End of story. All right, this is Cal Sterling. Uh, I have a double secret uh, preeminent witness here to my left who uh, I'll produce in one second. It's, a, it's what I like to say a simple application. I think it is. There are two buildings approved, you may recall, because of the water issue and the fact we can't start both of them, uh, we can't phase it, uh, we have uh, filed an application to withdraw the one unit, the one building, leaving one building left. Now you will ask me, I know someone will, yes, when the water is available, we will come back in for another amended application. So we're not withdrawing, we're deferring. Yes, I, you know, I was thank playing you. with the word withdrawing. Okay. Right. Uh, thank you. And um, made me think, oh, oh, I have, uh, we, are, we are agreeing to any and all of the TRC comments on the uh, TRC report dated May 30, 2024. Each and every item as set forth in that report uh, can and will be accommodated. So without, without further ado, my surprise double secret witness uh, is Mr. Vince Dominic seated to my left. I don't know if he has to be sworn in. Do we swear you in at the beginning of the year? No, we no, don't. No, no, so no, you no. can raise your right hand, sir, please. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, 15 Imperial, well, no, I should list 475 DeMont, Somerset. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Thank Township. Thank you. As, as my esteemed friend pointed out, uh, the issue here is that uh, the township has an expired master permit, and because of that, the amount of units that we can allow to hook up on any one individual, if we have the two buildings, will exceed that. So it's really a, a contractual relationship between the DEP and the township that is preventing. They want to build the two buildings now. We can't sign off on that. So what they've agreed to do is temporarily remove it from the site plan, and as soon as we can sign off on the second building, I and, and the applicant will return and explain again that now we have, you know, a signed, executed master permit with the DEP. All the original conditions they're going to comply with, they've already said they're going to comply with the TRC. There's nothing changed to the site plan. All of the infrastructure for both buildings is allowed to go in. They just can't make the connection to that building, they won't be able to build that building until the master permit has been amended. And from the aerial uh, provided in the report from the uh, staff, it's cleared, it's ready for development, it was always intended for development, and like you say, there are no changes from the originally granted approval. True. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify too, just because it, we may have some members of the public, and I did have one or two folks come to the counter, um, which is to say that uh, they, the short history of this is that that rear portion of the property was was approved for apartments way back when the, the development was originally approved. It was never built for whatever reason. Um, they came back a few years ago to amend that approval and actually reduce the number of apartments. Um, that was the subject of a hearing um, where members of the public participated. Um, and there were conditions imposed as part of that including screening and the look of the buildings, et cetera. Nothing related to that approval is changing other than the timing of the buildings. Um, and Vince, correct me if I'm wrong, is there any change even in the underground, the alignment of the underground water lines? No. None. So, so literally nothing is changing on what was presented to the board and approved by the board a few years ago, solely re related to the timing of the buildings. I'm sorry.
storm drainage, paving, uh, water, so that's all going to remain in place. Uh, we have to reduce the infrastructure. Uh, it's going to stay the same. And then uh, as we're permitted in the future, we'll come back uh, with the amended site plan, putting the back the building, which was deferred. So it's basically in the short term, if it was to move forward with construction, that portion that's the second building may kind of look like a pad site, like grass with... I don't have any questions. Any members of the board do? Um, okay, so without further ado, I'll, um, I'll make a motion to open this hearing to the public. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Come to the microphone and um, state your name and address. <laughs> and um, if you're, do you want to swear in? Yeah, I'll, I'll swear you. Yeah. Raise your right hand, please, sir. Solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Your name and address, please. David August, like the month, 50 Spangenberg Lane, uh, I don't know, 500 feet from the uh, construction site. So just wondering, is there any plan for temporary remediation of the infrastructure that's been put in already, um, which has some open areas that has water that collects in it uh, and the like until um, permission comes through to actually build on the build the second building. Well, if 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 there's if there's an issue, uh, call us at the township, and we'll send the inspector out to make sure you know if there's any standing water. We'll we'll talk to the contractor. You can call us at you can talk to Mark or Vince. That's me, Dominic. You can call us, email us, tech. I'll give you my cell phone number if you want before you leave, and you can just send me a text and tell me what the issue. I will contact the contractor, and the contractor will go out and, and fix whatever the issue is. Mr. Okay. August, we, we intend you know, to, to do whatever is necessary to reduce any uh, issues on the neighbors. Uh, most of the improvements should be done, but as you say, if there are any open issues, you get a hold of uh, either Vince or Mark, they'll advise us and we'll have it taken care of. Okay, thank you. And, and so you're starting on the one building immediately, right? Because you, you can do that. Um, they, they've, they've started. The, they've, it is a construction site now. Right. But, but they I mean, were stopped because they couldn't put the underground. Right. But they're going utility. full bore with the one yes. building that yes. they're allowed, which Absolutely. should, you know, you're going to be there and you'll be able to correct pretty quickly any issues because maybe it was clear without any vegetation or just gravel, it's settled, it collected water or whatever the case may be, you can easily remediate that while you're out there constructing the one building that you can from there. Well, we've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had any recent angry comments from uh, code enforcement or uh, Mr. Healy. So, and you know, if we're notified, we'll, we'll have our client take care of it. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the public need to come forward? Seeing no takers, I move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, uh, um, I'll make a motion to approve um, this particularly unique uh, application in which there is no change to the original application, um, but that the applicant will construct the one building uh, due to water capacity issues and uh, defer construction of the second building and will return when um, the um, water capacity um, is, is uh, provided. And I offer three conditions, Mr. Chairman. You may certainly may. Applicant shall provide the TRC a construction plan staging plan for review and approval prior to release of a certificate of occupancy for building one. Can we call that a logistics plan now, Jim? I'm only teasing. That's, that's I don't care. Staging is fine. Just reading what Mark wrote. <laughs> Number two, final roadway and parking lot surfacing shall not be completed until approved by the Township Engineering Office. Agreed. Okay. All conditions of the three prior resolutions will remain in force and effect, except as may have been specifically modified or waived. You got it. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will um, amend my motion to incorporate Mr. Clarkin's comments. Okay, Sammy. Theodore Chase? Yes. Robert LaCourt? Yes. Sammy Siobhan? Yes. Jennifer Wagner? Yes. Mejia Rafiq? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Rebecca Hilbert? Yes. 
Chairman Orsini. Yes. Thank you very much. See you again uh, pretty soon. Okay. Jimmy, take it. Thank you. Yes, this is the hi it's going to be the highlight of the evening. So. Uh, sure. No, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And how do you want to do? Do you want to um, continue to do? You want to? Um, you can take it if you want. Okay. Sure. Keep it going. Yeah. So is your granddaughter going to join the family forum? Some exorbitant on her for about a night. And the over under, I think, is two years. And then we hope to snag her. All right, so I'll keep my voice up so I don't have to hold the mic. Um, doesn't have to. Oh, oh, definitely not in minutes. All right, but if you if you want to tape it, that's fine. So, with the chairman's suggestion, uh, I'm here. I'm going to cover two topics. The first one is a refresher on basic land use principles. And we're doing that is because there are no new cluster cases that you need to be aware of. There aren't any. All right? There's one case, and I'll discuss further uh, about uh, conflicts of interest. And some of you may have uh, got it because it was fairly heavily publicized. Um, so the second item that we're going to handle. How to properly create a resolution for denying an application. Putting it with a That's our second topic. Um, some of this is basic, and you're a veteran board, but it never hurts to refresh. Right? You are serving in a quasi judicial. What that means is
It's hard for me to think of a specific reason.